on part one of this comprehensive interview with adult actress and adult performer advocate, Lasha Lane, Alexandra and Lasha explore the issues relating to the affordability of the current STD testing clinics, which are attached to the Free Speech Coalition Control Pass Network, and how the current high cost of testing may halt the ability of performers from lower income brackets of society, performers who are often people of color, from participating in the adult industry. In addition, Lasha questions why the Free Speech Coalition doesn't readily provide application or invitation information as to how other STD testing clinics, which may offer more affordable testing, can join the FSC Pass Network. It's important to note that Lasha reached out to the FSC directly multiple times but was not properly acknowledged until recently on April 1st, 2020 being that it is a class issue when it comes to the affordability. Essentially, PASS is acting as a vehicle to create segregation. Within. Not necessarily create segregation, but to, to, in order to, to fuel it. To, they're, they're being a conduit, and, they, they, and that's what I'm trying to let them know. And my frustration ends up being, I can't let you know that because you won't talk to me. You won't answer the question. You just ignore me. I sent the email out. I walked over and I talked to FSC at their booth and asked them the questions. And of course, you know, we're AVN, so let's talk after AVN. So I send an email immediately and a, a response to Michelle and FSC and got no response. In February, I called the office twice, got no response. So once that happens, I start doing a little bit more research, digging a little deeper, finding out more about Talent Health Labs, talent, finding out you know, about how that system works. I just wanna know how to get in. If you can't tell me how to get in, that means you don't want me to know how to get in. Why don't you want me to know how to get in? Is it because I'm, I'm not doing it? I mean, there, it ended up being, I, I know that AIDS Healthcare Foundation can do the same kind of testing that our labs do, but there's a, po a political issue there. You know, there's history there. Yeah. No one is really talking about. There's history between those two, but I don't give a fuck about that history if it can get my performers in the door to do the job that this world wants to see. I don't give a fuck about your politics. I want to work. That's it. That's all I do. I want to work and I want to do what I need to do to feed my my daughter. And you know, you guys will be gone soon. So I'm gonna talk and say what I want. Well, I hate to break it to you, but you're actually a natural politician. But <laughs> let's clarify very quickly. Now, it sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, your goal or your objective is to figure out how to um, figure out what the application process would be for an alternative lab to become a part of the PASS database. Is correct. that correct? Simple as that. Okay. How? Tell me how it's not even on their their it's website. It's not on their website or anything. It's not on their website. It, there's no there's no uh, information as to how you become part of PASS. There's no invitation into that community, and all it ends up being is these producers aren't paying for our PASS testing. Our producers are getting our testing for free. Our directors, our studios. I mean, some of these people are. Some of these companies definitely are paying for testing, but some of them that have been grandfathered in for so long are not. They're sending their girls over that don't have to pay to get tested. You know, they're sending over performers that are brand new. They're sending over girls that are coming in that they want to, as opposed to the ones that can afford to do it on their own and, and get out there and put their name out. It ends up being super controlled where you can't get in unless you fit in. I don't want to fit in. I never have. I don't want to. It's ugly out there. I don't want to look like y'all. I mean, honestly, I really don't. I don't want that on my conscience. Right. I don't want someone saying, oh, well, you said this and now you're doing this because you're getting paid. That's not my, that's not my style. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm so glad we're talking because this is an issue that really had not been on my mind. Um, years ago, I was speaking with someone who had a concern when it came to, uh, I, I, exactly how the testing worked, but I just hadn't thought about it for a while. Right, um, there, and there are things within our testing that need to be done too. We're not testing for um, for herpes. True. Would you, know, you be open to, um, if you had the right people approach you, would you be open to creating a competitor system to pass or an alternative 
to pass because you know there's no way for me to foresee what would happen but when i do think about that cost and i think about how um certain people are basically barred from performing due to the cost or at least from performing consistently mm -hmm. um I, i think that's something that could that could happen an alternative I, I to pass because uh, even when i think about the like i'm wondering now if the demographics of the industry are are a certain way when it comes to the number of talent of color simply because a lot of talent of color can't afford the test now there's other factors that i already know for a fact but it's just there's something a whole to think urban about. versus there's a whole urban versus mainstream thing too yeah. you're not black enough or you're not mainstream enough or you know there's a whole bunch of bullshit within that community as well yeah. um if if maybe i could I would love to work with PASS on, on this. I'd love to make sure that what we have in our community is already strong. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to work with both FSC and PASS um, and the APAG union. Mm -hmm. APAG has been a very strong supporter for our community. And everybody may have their issues within that community, uh, with, with, with certain people who run that community, like Elena and, and other people and how it came to be. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't want a dude running the guild for for the union i just don't hmm. we are our, our industry is made by women you know and if one or two women can run it and do it the way that it needs to be done i'm fine with that i don't care if a man is in there right away you know there definitely be needs to be more female leadership okay. across the board so that women are more comfortable coming forward with issues such as mm -hmm. yours today yeah um, and that's why they're not heard so if there's a way for me to join all of that together and make all of us work together that's fine i just want to make sure that the our our fsc is not you know taking you know there's other things that go on with fsc that leads me to believe that it may not be in the better or the interest of the performers within this industry to get it done and i want to make sure that i that that's not the case i want to make sure that i'm not misunderstanding so that if i'm wrong i can go back and say you know what i'm sorry i was wrong fsc is not like this you now know, at any point did um anyone from the fsc refer you to um gosh what's it called adult performers advocacy committee apac did any so i already knew about apac mm -hmm. um but I did not contact them at all. I have only been working within somewhat the channels that I've been networking with for over the year that I've been back. I've been talking with FSC. I've been talking with Talent Health Labs, trying to go directly to the source. I've been talking to APAG to see what the friction is. There's friction right now between FSC and APAG. You know, these are two people that are supposed to be doing the most for our community. I can't fight with them. I really can't because FSC is getting us money for for this for for our being furloughed and getting us health insurance, and APAG is doing our best to make sure that the workers in this industry are getting what they need. Work together, people. We can do it. You don't want to right now. We can fucking do it. So yeah, if I can get another system that is this, it's all it is is a national registry and database. Let me know what the testing requirements are. This is going to be fair. This is not about the money. This is about the work. This is about California and the federal government not getting on our asses and cutting us off. They're already trying to chop us at the neck right now with getting funding for uh, the coronavirus. If if we don't have to worry about them regulating us, we can all make the money that we need. And in order for California, especially, we have to have um, like we have to have some sort of unity within this community. So if I can find a way to do that without fucking up the structure as is and just getting the wrong people out of there, then it can work. And there are more people of color coming in. There are more women coming in. There you are would more... be a wonderful um, person to have on that Adult Performers Actors Guild board. Um, even talking they're not exactly that. a fan of me and I'm not a fan of them, but if you were on there, I would be a fan of them because you are just articulating everything so perfectly. Um, I, I love, I love APAC. Um, I have grown to really adore um, Alana and Ruby and all of them. They do amazing things. And I, at, at XBiz LA, actually before all this happened, I spoke with Alana and I told her that I wanted to join APAC. 
and we haven't gone through the processes or anything like that. I actually knew her before I spoke to Kiki and I talked, she came to me after my exchange with Kiki that same day. She wasn't at ABN. Kiki went to her and said, yo, your girl, she just came to me and was like, eh. So Alana called me and she told, we, we spoke and I told her what happened and we just left it at that because it's not ready. We're not ready. They're not ready for that yet. You know, um, well, I want to from what that. I can observe, APAC does need additional um, people who actually want to help the adult community and this is these are all just my observations they want they they are they're very she wants me to do it she definitely does okay. want me to do it and i okay. want to do it we just have not made the steps right now they're fighting right now just to stay at union i want them to to win that fight first and then i can join or i can help however i can on the outskirts i can be vocal i can encourage other performers to be vocal the the women and the black women in this industry let's just start there are becoming more vocal Finally. They're not afraid to talk like they used to. And I'm seeing if it's because of, of the the work that they're getting on their own, they're starting to see that they don't need their agency's backing to get the kind of work that they want. So they're being more vocal. Anna, Fox, Osa, very vocal. Kira, very vocal. And I just wish that they weren't the, um, I mean, Lotus, very vocal. You know, I just really wish that they weren't the only voice for blackness within this community. I wish there are urban girls, and it's funny because they're still black, but our urban girls don't have a voice. I'm kind of in both, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I wanted to tragically, uh, strategically place myself within both communities, both mm -hmm. urban and mainstream, so that I could kind of have a voice for both communities, so I could listen to what's going on in both sides of the community. I can listen to the mainstream, black women that are having their issues within that community. And I can listen to the urban women, the urban black women that are having issues within that sphere of massage noir and, and just mistreatment within our own community for mm -hmm. us and how we're looked at. I want all of us to be heard. And I want the industry to just kind of see us as a whole instead of seeing us as she's kind of white, black, She's kind of black, black. She's got a loud voice. She's quiet. I love the fact that we're speaking out now and we're not afraid to do it. We're not afraid to do it. And the far, the more it goes, we're starting to be more ourselves. We're starting to be more vocal. We're starting to not give a fuck about how you think we look, how you think our tone is, or how you think we speak, or how much of a lady you think we are. We still suck dick. We still have college degrees. We still run businesses and we still all do all of this stuff. You're gonna listen to us now. You don't have a choice anymore. Well, let me ask you, what are your long-term goals in the industry at this stage? Because you already got your feet wet when you first entered when you were younger, then you took your break, developed your life. Now you're re-entering, you're coming back like a freight train about to run everybody <laughs> over, which is wonderful. You can in, man. <laughs> but, but what are your long-term goals? Where do you see yourself? Are, are you planning to just, you know, remain for three years, five years, the oh, rest of your life? That. What's going on? I'm in it for as long as I can be. Um, I mean, I'm over the hump already. I'm, I'm, I'll be 43 in a couple of days. So I am just ready to... I also you see yourself as a studio owner, a producer, I talent? myself as, as a producer in the end. Um, I'm already shooting my own stuff. I already have series in production, you know, for, I have four or five different series in production. I have Wonderful. Halloween shorts, you know, things like that. Companies that, I, I mean, I, I know that I'm never really going to be able to work with a lot of these companies right there because of my mouth, because of my presence. So I know that I have to break those doors and I have to get that stuff together myself. So I want to own my own studio. I want to be able to hire my own actors. I want to be able to put my own stuff out. I want to be able to have, you know, uh, an award show that fully encompasses this industry. I love AVN. Oh my God, please don't put that in, in you know, in the sphere that I don't love them because I do. I just want it to be more inclusive and they want to be more inclusive. They really do. They want to be more inclusive. The money behind all of it is what keeps everyone kind of in check. The old guard keeps everyone in check, you know, and they really, the old guard thinks that they're making strides because they're acquiescing, they're giving us, you know, someone of an, an other as a leadership in, in major companies. But it's still, it's it's not enough. There's still 
doing the bare minimum and they don't even know what's enough. So if I can also get into, I mean, so I want to own my own production company. I want to make sure that diversity and inclusion is a thing and that they know what that is. You know, they don't really, they, they have an idea of what it is, mm -hmm. but they're not asking the people that want to be included. They're not asking those people within that industry, including them to have a voice. They're not understanding that it's not, it, just having us there in that space is not enough. We no, need to be. Not. Well, yeah. one thing I've always thought needed to be addressed has been the, um, race-based wage discrimination that yeah. has gone on for a very long time not many people talk about it do you have any thoughts on that i'm still too new to really give a mainstream versus content creator a really broad perspective on it when i first started it was easier because there was no real uh there was no internet there was no content creators. Everything was studio. Every you had to know people in order to do it. You don't have to do that now. So it's just um, the pay rate is shitty across the board. Yeah. It is. It's shitty across the board. It doesn't matter if you're doing it with you know other content creators. Most of us do interchanging work for free. We don't get our money until a studio books us. Um, and then those studios will come in and they'll lowball you, depending on not just your race, just depending on your size. I've had companies that will come to me and ask me, they, you will have a Laura Jensen on your website and you ask me to work for you. And when I say, oh, okay, great. I would love to you know, talk to you about that. What are you offering your models? And you tell me you want to see my reel? No, you came to me. You know what my work is. What you want me to do is be so happy and overjoyed because I'm a fat black girl who wants to work in this industry and say, yes, I'll do it for free. No, I'm not going to do it for free. Let me know what you have to offer me because I know what I have to offer you. You need me more than I need you. A lot of these women are not understanding that. If we did, I'm sorry, not just the the women. I think oh. it's wonderful that you're, you're saying what you're saying. Let, let me ask you what, um, Let's talk about your good experiences versus bad. We don't have to talk about all of them, one of each. If you could share what your best experience ever has been in this industry, what what was it? Okay, so my my experience in this industry has not been bad. I think I've had what the last, It's it's been more about uh, feeling and, and what this industry actually sees me as as opposed to how I've been treated. Everyone has been really nice to me, especially to my face. Um, but everyone's been really nice. Everyone's been really accommodating. Every, even Michelle, we're still gonna talk. You know, everyone has been really nice. So for me, um, my best accomplishment so far, this is a really long time ago, was just working for video team and getting like my first really big shoot for them. Um, doing that and I felt beautiful you know going on set for the first time and having makeup artists and hair and just not having that on your typical BBW set it was just great to, to have that kind of thing um actually I'm lying now because I have had a better experience it was AVN this year okay um I have not been back long AVN was amazing for us this year for BBWs for women of color for LGBT they were amazing for us this year and that made me feel Great. I was sending people down to ABN to get passes so that they could get up on stage for ABN stars and make new fans, bring new people in, let everyone know who you are. Right next to Carla Lane, right next to Misty Stone, right next to T-Pain who comes in and sings for us and we all get go crazy on stage. They treated us like the industry should treat us. It's just anybody else in this industry. We do so much for this industry and we love this industry. This industry affords us a lifestyle that some of us with mental health issues, with uh, with um, substance abuse issues in the past, some of us are getting away from bad situations come to this industry because there are other people like us and we do what we wanna do and, we, and you're giving us that opportunity to shine. So that for me was really great, was having ABN support us on a level that I've never seen before with anybody, even hearing the complaints within the BBWs within this community. They were so, we, they had so much fun this year. They had so much fun this year. We They, they really went above and beyond for us. And, and it kind of chokes me up to, to talk about it, but they did, they went um, above and beyond in that for me. Well, I'm not even gonna ask you about a bad experience. Because yeah, I don't wanna trench that. Let's not be negative or anything. Um, let's see what else do, is there anything it, else? It, wasn't, it actually oh, wasn't like, treatment thing it was just uh, a scene that you're an excellent I mean I I really hope that the industry leaders 
do listen to you because you really are someone who, from my perspective at least, is an ideal spokesperson for the industry. Um, I, and I'm very critical. I, I mean, I can be a downright bitch, but you are just very logical in regards to how you're presenting and you know your concerns. And okay, here's a question. If there was one major change, if I had a magic wand and I could make that happen, mm -hmm. what one or two changes would you really like to see manifest within the industry? I would like to see all of the agents gone. Oh, that's, I've never heard that before. Why? They don't give a fuck about anybody but themselves and the money. They really don't. They don't. They don't give a fuck about the, the, the women in this industry. Um, the publicists are shitty too, you know? Um, all of these people are, are just out for money and it ends up being their performers that want to do the kind of work and they want to have the kind of message that they want. They want to, you know, get rid of terms like BBC, you know, which is fucking gross. You know, they want to get rid of certain terms that demean people that are exclusionary. And these companies don't want that gone. Hmm. They are okay with continuing to perpetuate stereotypes that don't need to be perpetuated anymore. Th times are changing. Yes. People don't yeah. want to be um, looked at a certain way in the same old frame of eyes that have been looking at us since the way porn started. You know, th those times are changing and I'm really glad these guys are dying off. They're, you know, I want these agencies to be gone. I want, you know, people to be able to get into this industry, do the work that they want to, not be pressured to do bullshit that they don't want to do uh, because they need the money for substance abuse problems or whatever we have, you know, there, there are people that are doing this because they want to do it. There are people that are doing it because they need to do it. You know, I, I want to be able to just be able to do it. You know, I, I don't want there to be any any stigma to it. I want you to be able to be healthy. You know, I want companies to be able to treat us nicely and know that we have representatives on our side that are gonna um, that are gonna be like, no, if you're treating your actresses like that, you can't sit with us anymore. You gotta go. You know, and I, I want the performers to feel comfortable enough to be like, okay, well, we're going to band together and we're not going to work with this company anymore, no matter how much you pay us, you know, where, or, or offer us. Because what's going to, what's, what's starting to happen is when they have these agents and when we have these companies that are not out for us, we have these girls that want to work so bad, mm -hmm. they will take whatever they can get and undercut whatever hard work that we're trying to do. You know, even though they believe in us and they believe in that, they still need to eat you know and you can't you can't blame someone at that point I have a 13 year old I have to do certain things in order to you know make sure that we have a roof over our head I just won't compromise my integrity to do it I'm fine if you do especially if you're up front about it tell me oh I have to feed my family I don't give a fuck you know tell me that don't I, I don't want you to have to make excuses for the choices that you make you make those decisions because of that and when we have agencies and we have publicists and we have uh, media outlets that are only giving certain voices that that message, they're telling us that if you don't have the message that we want to hear, we're shutting you out. You can't work in this industry. And that has yeah. been what's happening. You, you know, that's a very, very interesting point that you brought up. And I'm so glad you did. Um, another question, if you could offer a piece of, of advice about the industry, entering the industry or um, functioning within within the industry to your younger self, to yourself, but when you were younger, what would you say to yourself? I actually kind of did that because I'm starting over, you know? Uh, I, I just, it's, I, I don't know if that's a, a fair question. If I could have someone else do it, because again, I, I just kind of half-assed about it the first time. Um, I wanted to make this a, a career goal. I, ha I, I Come in with your attentions. Come in with your intention set. Find out why you want to be in this industry. Are you in this industry because, you know, if you're just, you want to be a star? Be a star, you know, if you're, it's cool, be a star. If you're in it to, you know, be a star and to make a change, um, you know, 
figure that out and, and find out how to kind of navigate it beforehand. Find out how the industry works. Read, you know, yes. there's a lot more to this industry than just fucking on camera. There's networking, there's business, there's going to, you know, conferences, there's schmoozing, there's a little bit of ass kissing and being diplomatic and not, and, and I'm never going to kiss someone's ass, but there's a way to, you know, to, to really get what you want to get in by, you know, being able to speak with people the way and, and, and getting them to understand where you're coming from. You know, and as it black women, it's very hard for them to see us in in a way that's other than angry. They don't see us as passionate. There, it's kind of like a cross between the two. It's like a New Yorker who's like "fuck you," blah, 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 and it's like super passionate about that. Versus you're really demure, kind of Californian. That's like, oh, I don't like the f word. You know, it's 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 that they don't see us as passionate. They see us as angry. And when they don't see our passion, we get angry. Mm -hmm. So, and, and our anger is what fuels it and it just makes it, it, it makes it bad. We don't want to be angry. We're passionate about what we do and we well, want- it's time for black women not to be so polarized. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, to be seen as any, any other woman. I, I mean, there's so many stereotypes that are, you, you know, just thrown onto every kind of woman in the industry and all that needs to come down. And it's only going to come down as we do have more female leadership because, um, Working in the adult mind. entertainment, it's it's an it's an intimate industry. Mm -hmm. People want to act like it's not, but it is. And you kind of got to be a woman to understand that, you know, at least when it comes to um, the women in the industry, it takes a woman to understand a woman. I don't care what anybody says. It, it really does. And especially in the, the areas of Me Too and all that, I feel like that kind of got glossed over in yes, the point. It, it did. It did. It got glossed over because we're already looked at as sex objects anyway. No one gives a fuck about what porn stars do. <laughs> you know, they, they, they were the kind of treatment that we get on set. Now they're starting to because more women and more women of people of color are becoming part of, you know, office in, in our community and politics. They're seeing what we're, you know, what's going on with us and they're hearing our voices. So now things can change. But if the guard doesn't change and if the people in our industry aren't being shuffled out and, and being funneled in with new ideas and, and innovation, um, then even the work that our politicians and things are trying to do for us and our, our social leaders are trying to do for us won't touch that community. It won't. One thing I would really like to see you do on your own or if you want me to help you with it even you need to do a regular podcast. I know you said you did one in the past, but you really need to, I mean, starting yesterday, because I, I can just feel your energy and I, and I see it, how just it, your excitement and your enthusiasm is contagious. I mean, right now you're talking to probably one of the most cynical women <laughs> on the planet when it comes to adult entertainment and what's going on because i've had it and i and i'm on a mission but with i know it, but my mission for, i had a mission for you too okay but you give me hope and i just would really love to see women who are looking for a place to be heard come to you because you want to be there you see how it could be better you're hopeful you, you know you're strong you're dynamic you you seem very driven and you're you just come across so well so i i would like to check in with you once a month really but um just i i think that you need to host just a weekly maybe a bi-weekly podcast video podcast have your guests on talk about what's going on you know whether you're an independent creator or you, you know you're looking to get out there and, and work with studios or make your own studio whatever but yeah you you you've 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 got a certain thing about you and, and i really like seeing it i'm so glad we spoke today so thank you um, very much i have to tell you i was actually a little apprehensive um um, I was apprehensive to talk to you because I knew the slant that you had on it. You know, I, I did. I, I knew. I can tell. I watch all your videos. You know, I know that. <laughs> oh I no! Know that you were looking, I know that you were looking for kind of a reason to still. You wouldn't be doing this if you didn't think that there was a reason for it. And it kind of felt like you needed a little bit of more inspiration to see what the positive aspects of this industry were, to see that even though things have, have been shitty in the past, that they can change. Even people, like, I know that you had your reservations about Alana and, and APAG and FSC and all that. 
and um, well, and how they're. Well, I, I don't know if you're aware, but when it comes to the FSC, the FSC is very fortunate that I don't say certain things that I could say. It was a free speech coalition attorney who manufactured a lawsuit against me. And it's all because I exposed some controversy revolving around some previous free speech coalition leadership. Yeah. Now, is- I'm not going to say that the current leadership is what it was, but being yeah. that that happened, considering a situation involving an extreme hate site that targeted my family for years, put us in danger. And being that I received very little acknowledgement for a lot of the efforts that I've made over the years when it comes right. to bring certain things to light, when it, when it comes to how I've been demonized and villainized, at this point, I kind of just go with it. I'm like, all right, you want to see me as a big, bad black girl? So be I'm it. I'm going to be that for you. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm just very disappointed when mm-hmm. it came to the treatment, not just of myself, but that I've seen of others over the years. So uh, my final question for you, and then you can ask me a question if, or questions if you like. My final question for you would be, at this moment, let's say none of the changes that you would like to see happen were to happen. Would you recommend someone who is, I don't know, 21 years old, has stars in their eyes to enter the industry today? Um, Actually, let I, me expand. Okay, if no, if nothing were to change, would you recommend it? But if the changes that you have in mind were to manifest, then would you? I'm just gonna say yes. I would recommend it. Only I would only recommend it if you're not doing it for. Uh, I can't. I can't even. I can't even say that because their your intention is your intent. Um, I would recommend it, but I would just make sure that people understand that you don't need these large companies. You don't need an agent. You don't need a more PR. education. That, that's need what I'm hearing. Education. Okay. Learn about this education, thing. maybe planning, long-term mm-hmm. goals. One thing that if if I had a magic wand and I could change things, I I would create some sort of a system to where, or, or just a service that would even be attached to this testing to where if women want to sit down and speak with somebody who's like an advisor or a counselor in regards to creating a long term that place. Yeah, that's, there that's something. That place now. Okay. And that is the issue that APAG and FSC are having. APAG can do this. APAG is working with California right now. They're creating a system where sex workers understand what this industry is. They're able to have the resources that they need, like counseling. They, they have pineapple support. They have all these things that our industry people, our mainstream, is not offering us. Well, I did hear the controversy around what happened. Apparently, yeah, which was Alana's initial idea, then somehow, um, FSC Michelle and Lotus Lane lifted the idea, approached Pornhub behind Alana's back, according to Alana's tweets, because I, I documented all of this on Porn News mm-hmm. Today. Mm-hmm. And it's like there's some sort of a fight between who is going to be the educational resource. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, yet, and, and that just kind of comes back to my original thing with FSC and the past testing and all that. If you're able, and, and, and this is my mindset, and it kind of and it kind of turned over and I talked to Alana about it. If you're willing to stab other performers in the back, and I don't even know all of the details, <laughs> but let's just just let's just go by for what for what it looks like from the outside. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you're willing, as FSC, past Free Speech Coalition, all the people that speak for us and tell us not to work in this industry and tell us not to do certain things. If you're willing to to do all that AB5, I mean, uh, AB 2389 wants them to do and squeeze our necks some more, and you're willing to offer them the same thing that APAG is willing to do for free, but you're willing to do it at a price, what else are you willing to do? Look for part three of this interview with Lasha Lane soon on (laughs) pornnewstoday.com.